there are now some major updates to the murder of Nex Benedict that we need to talk about. Welcome everyone to Powered by Rainbows. I am of course your host, Professor Pride. And today we have to talk about some updates to the case with Nex Benedict in Oklahoma, because truly the details of this case get more and more chilling and horrifying as you keep digging into this case. Some things we talked about yesterday uh, were originally misreported by the local news in that area, and we wanted to update you on those things because they've now been corrected. Uh, so we're going to summarize what we talked about yesterday and correct the things we need to correct. So let's start off in the beginning. What we did in this episode is we went through an entire timeline from the very beginning of this to now to see exactly how it all transpired. And in, in all of my research, this is the only timeline that exists of the entire thing. So we're gonna first start off with years ago, uh, Nex's biological parents, by the way, Nex identifies as non-binary and uses the pronouns they and them. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be using throughout this entire piece again. But Nex's biological parents are in fact transphobic. And it is reported that Nex's grandmother actually adopted Nex and their five other siblings a few years ago to take all six kids away from Nex's parents because of this transphobia, among other reasons. It is important to note that Nex is not the only of the six siblings that are members of the LGBTQ. Another of Nex's uh, siblings identifies as LGBTQ, so uh, not the only one there, uh, at, at least one other. So uh, Nex was, and their family were also members of the Choctaw Nation uh, tribe, and so you also have a hint of whether or not this could be charged as a hate crime against an Indian tribe there as well. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting development on the federal side later on, and we'll talk about all of that in just a moment. Nex and their grandmother uh, were trying to improve how the Indian tribe accepted the trans community. So the grandmother admitted in different reports here that uh, she was first off not accepting too much of Nex being non-binary, but it's only because she's from an older generation and didn't quite understand what that meant. Um, as time went on, Nex was helping them under, uh, helping her understand uh, more about the non-binary community and uh, correcting her whenever she needed correction. Um, so the grandmother was very accepting here and was even working with Nex to improve how the Indian tribe accepted the trans community. So the grandmother was very much uh, helpful and an ally of the LGBTQ. Uh, it was the biological parents originally that were not accepting, uh, and they're still transphobic to this day. So that was something that was like kind of misreported in the news. So we were saying that the obituary was later given to the newspaper from the parents, no, it was not. It was given by the grandparent who is actually accepting. Uh, so that was kind of the confusion yesterday. The next thing we have to talk about in the timeline is actually the 2021 and 2022 school year. You might think that was a long time ago and how would that relate to this story now of Nexus's murder? But it directly correlates. I'm gonna show you exactly how. So the Libsa TikTok hate group creator makes a video targeting a teacher named Tyler Wren at the Owasso High School in Oklahoma, the same high school that Nex attended. In this video, the Libsit TikTok hate group creator targets this teacher and says that they are way too LGBTQ friendly and they should be fired from their job. So what ends up happening is the audience of Libsit TikTok hate group goes after the school, calls for the firing of this teacher. They go after him personally at his home, harass him like crazy, and call for him to resign. Eventually, due to the overwhelming harassment to the school and to the teacher in their home personally, Tyler Wren resigned from Owasso High School that year. According to reports from Nexus's grandmother, this, at the time, 
deeply upset Nex, as Tyler was one of the only teachers at the school who accepted Nex for being non-binary. And so you already have this story in 2021-22, where Nex was directly involved with a case of transphobia at the school from the lips of TikTok creator. That is very important here because of what's about to happen. In May of 2022, Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt passes a law that requires students to use the incorrect restroom. Boys are now required to use the girls' restroom and vice versa. For non-binary students like Nex, they are required to use the restroom matching their gender assigned at birth, meaning non-binary student like Nex is now required to use the girls' restroom compared to a private bathroom in the nurse's office. This law that he signed in May of 2022 goes into effect for the 2023-24 school year. So last school year, it didn't go into effect, but this school year it did in August of 2023. So a year goes by and the state of Oklahoma is very transphobic and homophobic still. So, you know, they're still very hateful, right? But in August of 2023, the law Governor Kevin Stitt passed in May 2022 now goes into effect, and trans students are now forced to use the wrong restroom across Oklahoma. Violence and bullying across the state of Oklahoma increases severely as the 2023 school year begins. This is seen in multiple reports by the Department of Education there, where you all of a sudden see bullying rates increase. I wonder how this happens. Does it have anything to do with the fact that you required people to use the wrong restroom? I have no idea, he says, you know, sarcastically. Here's the thing. Schools across the country that implement LGBTQ lessons and GSA clubs see higher rates of graduation, higher, uh, higher scores overall in their testing. Uh, their kids are much happier. Uh, you see less suicide rates and less violence. You see way less bullying in the schools. But schools like this in Oklahoma, where you implement these rules to require people to use the wrong restroom, they see higher increases of bullying and suicide and murder and all these different things like lower grade scores, uh, higher dropout rates. A lot of things happen in schools like this across the board every time that, like, We've been saying this for years now. We've been seeing these laws pass across the country, and every single time a law passes like this, like Florida, you see all these things happen. Lower test scores, higher dropout rates, uh, you have students not learning as much. I mean, I mean, if you've even seen the, the libraries in Florida, they're almost empty nowadays because there's no books to put out there. Just because they passed a law that says you can't talk about sexual orientation or gender identity, which includes straight people, by the way. Uh, so any book, inc and including a straight person or a gay person, is now banned off their shelves. So that's fun to see. Um, so you have just abysmal education across the board coming every single time with these laws. Oklahoma just happens to be... Uh, a, a state that has over 50... Like, not only have they been passing these laws... But this year in 2024, over 50 anti-LGBTQ bills have been proposed to the Oklahoma state legislator this year alone. It is the highest number of anti-LGBTQ bills being proposed in 2024 so far compared to any other state. It is the most transphobic and homophobic state on the legislator of any of the 50 states. You might think Florida or Texas would win that bet. But in fact, Oklahoma is the most transphobic and homophobic so far in 2024. So there's a lot more coming down the pipeline here, not just a bathroom bill that requires people to use the wrong restroom, right? But this happens in, uh, in August where we see the violence and bullying across the state increase severely as the school year begins. In fact, Nex's grandmother reported to the school in August of 2023 that Nex is being targeted by bullies for being non-binary. This bullying continues as Nex's grandparents do not see anyone being punished for the bullying and no signs of the bullying stopping. So nothing stops. 
the school doesn't go after the bullies and, you know, doesn't punish them at all. And you see Nex continually being bullied for being non-binary over and over again at school. So this is all happening. This is all being reported, all in paperwork. You know, this is leaving a paper trail. So eventually a lawyer could very much use that paper trail in a court case, by the way. Uh, so that's the good news in this, right? But the bad news is the school saw all of this happening and they chose not to step in at all to stop it. They're continually letting it happen. In Genu and that's an update that we haven't seen so far in, in any reporting that's uh, brand new that's coming out just now. So um, in January of 2024, Oklahoma Republican Superintendent of Public Schools named Ryan Walters appointed the founder of the hate group Libs of TikTok to the Oklahoma State Library Advisory Board. Now, uh, yesterday there was a little confusion on this. Uh, a superintendent in Pennsylvania of a school only oversees a certain district, a school district, and there's hundreds of school districts across Pennsylvania. And so, you know, I'm thinking superintendent means you're of a local area, you're in charge of a local area, but that's limited in their power, right? In Oklahoma, the Republican superintendent of public schools oversees the entire, basically, state department of education, okay? Uh, they oversee all public schools in the state of Oklahoma. And so that's the difference between, you know, different states on what a superintendent title means. In Oklahoma, it means they oversee all public schools in the entire state. And so Ryan Walters, who is the superintendent there, appointed the founder of a known hate group certified by the FBI as a hate group to the Oklahoma State Library Advisory Board. Not just a school board, the State Library Advisory Board, telling all libraries, public libraries, and school libraries across the state what books should be on the shelves. She's a terrorist. Like, we've gone over this yesterday. Like, she is single-handedly responsible for over 26 bomb threats and death threats, according to authorities. She's also responsible for sending her audience to go after people, harass them, dox them, share their address online, uh, known to send bomb threats and death threats to hospitals and schools across the country. This woman creates terror. She is a terrorist, and she is on the advisory board for the entire state of Oklahoma, telling them what they should and should not have in library shelves and should not have in schools. This is the most insane part of the story. She's not just on the school board of a local school board, she's on the advisory board of the entire fucking state of Oklahoma. That is a major update to this story and something that blew me away last night as we're getting many more reports coming in on this. And finally we find out, yeah, it wasn't just a school board, she's on the state advisory board. In a statement, Ryan Walters, the superintendent, said, he added her to the advisory be board because, quote, she was on the front lines showing the world exactly what the radical left is all about, lowering standards, porn in schools, and pushing woke indoctrination on kids. He also says, quote, her unique perspective is invaluable as part of my plan to make Oklahoma schools safer for kids and friendly to parents, unquote. <sighs> this man pisses me off, okay? I'm just going to put it out there he pisses me off because there's no there's no porn in schools it's schools that have lgbtq education have higher standards they have higher grade scores they have more people graduating than other schools that don't they it is insane to think you're lowering standards by having lgbtq education porn in schools oh my god like you want to talk about porn? Look in the freaking Bible. There's plenty of adult imagery in that book, okay? And to think that anything LGBTQ is porn would be just insane. Yes, there are adult books out there, but they're not all porn books, okay? Like, there's a lot of straight books out there that you're forced to read as a kid in school that have 
straight adult actions in them. This man pisses me off. And he's a big reason why this state has such hatred through the entire system because the governor and the superintendent guy agree on everything. I mean, this guy on his Twitter goes after tons of things that are not education-based. Like he goes after, uh, let me just go to his page because he goes after the open borders and Joe Biden and everything and blames Joe Biden for everything wrong with his schools that he oversees. It's like, you're the superintendent of all schools in Oklahoma. It's your problem. You should fix it. And he's even going after PETA and other organizations like because everything is a problem other than him, you know? Other than conservative viewpoints, everything's a problem. And in, we're indoctrinating kids by teaching them how normal they are for being lesbian or gay, and we're, you know, indoctrinating them for, you know, telling them how valid they are for being trans. I mean, it's scientifically proven that being trans is valid, and it's scientifically proven that being gay is perfectly normal and healthy, you know, but I guess he can overlook science as a superintendent of schools and education. Like, you're the head of an education department. Maybe you should l listen to some science every once in a freaking while. Anyway, he really pisses me off. So, Shea Rick, who is the, uh, the head of the hate group, lives at TikTok. Shea is the terrorist we were talking about before. She was added to the uh, state advisory board. But she is the former Brooklyn, New York real estate agent who grew up in Los Angeles, California. Uh, she lives, according to multiple reports, in New York, not California, as we reported yesterday. But either way, she lives in a different state than Oklahoma. It's either New York or California, and she somehow is on the Oklahoma Advisory Board. I don't know how you can legally add someone that does not live in the state to the advisory board of that state to tell the state what they should be doing, okay? I don't know if that's legal. Probably shouldn't be if it's if it is legal. <laughs> um, but it's definitely not something they should have done, regardless. Um, she gave up being a real estate agent years ago to work full time on the hate group website to push this narrative. She routinely lies in all of her reporting. Uh, she comes up with fake things. Like a couple years ago, she called a hospital and. Uh, asked a nurse there if they perform gender affirming care on, uh, on on children and she made up this entire phone call where the person on the phone minutes later told told Shea that you know oh we perform surgeries on kids first off it is illegal in the entire United States for you to perform gender affirming uh, uh, surgery on anyone under the age of 16. So even if you got this answer from a nurse who may not have known the law, even if you got that answer from a nurse, it's illegal for it to happen in the United States because that's the way the law works and medical boards have all agreed on this, okay? So you're, you're, you're saying this phone call happened with this nurse and the nurse confirmed that you're performing surgeries on kids, okay? Secondly, that was later proven to be a lie. This phone call did happen, but the person on the other end wasn't a nurse. So she entirely lied to her audience, and then suddenly that uh, the hospital where that nurse supposedly worked, yeah, that hospital started to get many, many bomb threats from her audience and her. So... It was kind of like that fun little case where you're like, I can lie as much as I want and send bomb threats to people and there's no consequences, right? That's what Chaya regularly does on the hate group lives at TikTok. The FBI reports that Chaya is responsible for at least 21 bomb threats and many more death threats to teachers and librarians across the country. So sarcastically, you might say to yourself, well, if she sends so many bomb threats and death threats, if she doxes so many librarians and school teachers, if she goes after them, 
until they are murdered, because that's also happened, um, and she routinely gets teachers and librarians fired across the country, what's a perfect job for this woman? Well, let's put her on the state advisory board to tell the teachers and librarians what to do. Perfect job, right? Sarcastically. So this situation all happens, and of course, Oklahoma conservative outlets are thrilled by this. We just added a terrorist to our advisory council. Great, let's be even more hateful, they say. So on February 6, 2024, Ryan Walters, the superintendent, takes a picture with Chea Raker, who is the founder of the hate group Lives a TikTok, and posts it on his Twitter saying, quote, making Oklahoma schools safe with Chea and Libs a TikTok. Let me show you this wonderful picture. He took a picture with a terrorist. He took a picture with a terrorist and he posted it. And still to this day, he has this picture online for all to see. So that means even after all of the backlash, even after Nex was murdered and all of the new news outlets are covering this, He's still fucking proud of it. He's still proud of being with this terrorist in his picture. I cannot understand how horrible of a human you have to be to still be proud of taking a picture with a terrorist that likely caused this murder for you to still have it on your website, on your Twitter feed. And the worst part of it all, make up making Oklahoma schools safe with her she a day before the murder you're talking about making a school safe with a terrorist being added to the state advisory board that is just insane to me so that's February 6 February 7th 2024 Next, and another trans student were violently attacked in the girls' bathroom in Owasso High School by three older girls. This is something that isn't really highly reported, but Nex was not the only one attacked. Nex was not the only one in the bathroom, okay? Three older girls attacked Nex for being non-binary and another trans student for being LGBTQ as well. So two transgender students were attacked in the same restroom at the same time by three older girls. If you want to say that these three girls attacked Nex, it could be argued it was for another reason. But for two transgender students to be attacked at the same time by three older girls, that right there means this was because they were LGBTQ. Why would you attack two trans students in the restroom? I just want to point out this would never have happened if that law was not passed in 2022 because Nex was non-binary. They were supposed to use a private bathroom that they could lock in a single stall. They should have never been in the girls' restroom. The trans student that was in the restroom should have never been there. They should have been in the bathroom that matched their gender identity, which would not have placed them in the girls' restroom. Okay, so neither of them should have been there in the first place. And it was all because of this law in 2022. So Governor Stitt has blood on his hands, okay? Because he's the one that caused both of them to be in the restroom in the first place. This is what's wrong with these laws that are being passed. They don't think about these things. The only harm trans people have in the restroom is from other students not causing harm. There is not a single case yet of a trans student or a trans person attacking someone else. There is not a single case of that happening yet. But there is plenty of the trans person being attacked. I just want to point that out. So, no teacher broke up the attack and no school staff member was in the restroom at all. That's something that uh, was misreported at the time by local news and we kind of picked it up and we're like, oh, a teacher came in there and broke it up. No, that never happened. No teacher was in there, no teacher broke it up. Basically, these three girls just 
bet the crap out of Nex and the other trans student, and they just left. They just went back to class. That's all that happened. Uh, no teacher broke it up. Uh, the attack reportedly lasted less than three minutes, according to cameras in the halls outside of the girls' restroom. During the attack, Nex was thrown against the restroom sink and started to bleed, and uh, their head was hit off of the floor where they reportedly lost consciousness for a brief moment. Nex also incurred several bruises and cuts which drew blood. So they were thrown against the sink, thrown against the floor, lost consciousness, and had several bruises and cuts, which causes them to bleed, which caused them to bleed. So it's unquestionable that Nex was severely injured in this attack. And the other trans student was also injured, uh, but no reports are coming out of what in injuries exactly happened to them uh, yet, because that hasn't really been the headline of the news yet. All three of the attackers went back to class immediately with no injuries. The school reports that all three of those girls did not have any injuries, and they went back to class like it was any other day, which is horrifying. I mean, to commit such a horrible attack and then just walk away and just go back to class like nothing happened. That is the most chilling part of all of this. That means that these three girls are freaking psychopaths that would attack someone and then just, hmm, well, that happened. Let me go back to school. Oh my God. What kind of horrible person do you have to be to attack someone and then just, hmm, well, what the, what's for lunch today? Oh my god. Nex and the other trans student then walked themselves to the nurse's office, and they were assessed for their injuries by the medical staff at the school. Very importantly here, the school did not call an ambulance or the police, even though they should have called the police for any physical attack and called an ambulance for any head injury, according to their school's policy. The nurse did, in fact, call the grandmother of Nex to tell her about the incident. That's what we got wrong yesterday. We said that they didn't call the grandmother at all, but in truth, they did call the nurse, the nurse, not the principal, the nurse, did call Nex's grandmother to tell her what happened, but apparently told her it wasn't as bad as it truly was. The nurse downplayed the injuries to the grandmother, which is the most chilling part of all of this. I mean, like... The nurse, who you would think should care about students' lives the most in a school, downplayed it. And, like, at the very least, you should have said, Hey, Grandma, your grandchild just lost consciousness and is bleeding and is bruised and was hit off of a sink in the restroom. Maybe you want to think about sending them to the hospital right now. But they downplayed the injuries to the grandmother, which is another level of transphobia in this entire story. So then Nexus's grandmother then went to the school right after this to pick up Nex and realize just how bad Nex was injured. Uh, so this is the first time Nex's grandmother actually saw how bad Nex was injured from this entire incident, immediately knowing that the nurse lied to her outright about how bad the injuries were. Nexus's grandmother then called the police to report what happened. The grandmother is the one to call the police, not the school, not the principal, not the nurse. The grandmother, as soon as she came to the school to see how bad it truly was, she's the one that had to call the police to file the report of what happened for assault. Oh my God. <laughs> the only reason the police have any report of this happening is because the grandmother was the one to call them. And that's coming directly from the uh, 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 Owato uh, Police Department. They're saying that she's the one that called in. Uh, this is when the uh, school principal informed Nexus's grandmother that Nex was suspended for the next 14 days. The school has not told anyone if they suspended the three girls who attacked Nex, nor did they say if they suspended the other trans student who was attacked in the restroom. The only one who reportedly was suspended was Nex even though Nex never threw a punch in the attack. So while the grandmother's showing up to pick up their child to go to an emergency room, they're seeing how terrible their child is injured, their grandchild is injured. 
They're seeing that the school nurse lied to them about how bad the injuries were, and they're getting told by the principal, hey, by the way, your child was attacked and now they're suspended for the next 14 days, even though they didn't attack back. By the way, in any lawsuit that's going to happen someday, that just added an extra zero to the lawsuit. I guarantee you. Okay? So they're suspending the victim. Nex's grandmother then took Nex to the Bailey Medical Center who gave them some medical treatment and later discharged Nex to go home. Multiple ER doctors across Oklahoma have said anytime a child suffers head trauma or loses consciousness, both of which happen in this case, it means an automatic overnight stay for observation in the ER to ensure the child is okay. This means discharging Nex to go home that night goes against Oklahoma state medical protocols. So that is another thing they're going to tack onto this lawsuit eventually. So the, this medical center is just like, yep, yeah, she's fine. I know that she lost consciousness, you know, and I know, know it's against state protocols and of what we should do medically, but you know, go home, you're fine. You're non-binary, so it's, it's fine if you just go home and it, it seems at this point in the story that no one fucking cares if this person died. It just, I don't know if you're getting that vibe, but I certainly am. No one fucking cares. So that night, Nex went to bed with a, with a severe headache, according to the official statements from Nex's grandparents. Uh, so they were still very much in pain from what happened. Um, on February 8th, 2024, the very next day, after being suspended, Nex and their grandmother decided to go on, uh, go to an appointment in the afternoon. It is not known at this time who that appointment was with, but it is speculated online in some places to have been with another doctor for a second opinion on all of this, although that has not been confirmed through any official source. That's just what's speculated online they were doing. Uh, it could have very easily just been, you know what, my ch grandchild was suspended and we're going to go to shopping and enjoy the day because, you know, this is entirely illegal, but we'll figure out all that discrimination later. Um, it very well could have been they were going to an appointment with a lawyer to talk about, you know, their child being suspended. And that's not legal either, you know. Um, so it could have been a hundred different things. It's all speculated online, but no one really knows what that appointment was for, nor do this, does this family have any, you know, uh, right or have any need to share with the public what that was over. It could have been anything and there's absolutely no need for them to share what it was actually for. Nexus's grandmother then called an ambulance and Nex was taken to the St. Francis Pediatric Emergency Room where they were later pronounced dead at the hospital. Now, I'm not going to say that St. Francis did anything wrong because there's no evidence of that um, yet at this time, but I will say in the last moments of Nexus's life, they are taken to a Christian-sounding emergency room. And I can't help but remember back in where I used to live uh, in my childhood, there was another emergency room named after a saint, and it was very Christian. Only Christians, only Roman Catholics, in fact, were allowed to be hired at this emergency room. And... Uh, you had to be Christian through and through for any of them to give you any kind of treatment. Um, if you weren't Christian, if you were Protestant, if you were like, you know, anything other than Roman Catholic, uh, you didn't get as good of treatment there. Um, that's how I grew up. And I'm not going to say this is how St. Francis Pediatric Emergency Room is, but it does call into question... Was this another step in the process of transphobia? Was this another step of, did St. Francis know how to treat next uh, because they were non-binary? Did they give, you know, a gender-affirming treatment to Nex at the very last step of the way, the very last day there? Um, it makes you question all of this. Um, and, and, and it's another thing that you have to call into question because of where you're at in Oklahoma and because of all of the people so far that are being severely transphobic that do not care about this child's life. And so I'm not saying anything happened there. I'm just saying, like, we have to now question that, too. 
it's a place called St. Francis. So you have to wonder. That's all I'm saying. Later in the week, police said they were investigating the incident and, quote, all charges would be on the table for those who committed this crime. They said that they were just waiting for the autopsy and toxicology reports from the coroner. I'm going to just step in here and say, why are you waiting for the toxicology reports? Toxicology means you think something was in Nex's system at the time that contributed to, to their death. Toxicology is like, hey, were you drunk? Were you on some sort of drug? You know? That's what toxicology report means. So now we have to wonder, like, are the police just basically hoping that this non-binary child has some sort of hormones in their system and the coroner will find that as the cause of death or something, you know, because of how severely transphobic this area apparently is. So they're waiting on a toxicology report and an autopsy at this point in uh, February 8th week, right? Uh, Nexus's grandmother asked a local paper to publish an obituary for Nex. However, the grandmother accidentally gave the newspaper the wrong name and pronouns to publish that obituary. Later, Nexus's grandmother said she was fully accepting of Nexus's gender identity and pronouns, but in the moment during the trauma of losing her grandchild that week, she mistakenly gave, an, uh, gave Nexus's dead name and wrong pronouns to the paper for the obituary. That could be somewhat forgiven because, I mean, many of us have never lost a child, but it is truly terrible to go through. And in that moment, this grandmother who was brought up a certain way and was trying to do her best in learning how to be better could have just broke at that point and made one mistake and go and, and, and said to herself, look, this was my child that I, I helped raise from two years old, you know, uh, when their parents kind of disowned them. And I had to raise these six kids on my own uh, with, with my husband, the grandfather, you know. And so it could have just been a momentary lapse in her judgment. It wasn't right in any way. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, look, if you lose a grandchild that you've raised since they were two years old to now 16 years old, I don't understand it, but it happened. And it was a mistake. She later admitted the mistake, and she later said that the headstone for Nex will have Nex's actual name, Nex Benedict, and the proper pronouns uh, on the headstone. That is what she's saying. So we have to take her at face value now and just hope for the best. Uh, everything so far shows us that, you know, she was being... Uh, helpful to Nex and accepting of Nex. She even adopted Nex away from her parents because her parents, her biological parents were transphobic. Uh, so you have to think to yourself, the grandmother was probably affirming of Nexus's gender, but in this moment, uh, she lapsed and she gave the dead name by accident. So I'm just going to take that as a mistake. It's not great. It's, it's not good at all. I'm just saying it was a mistake. And she admitted the mistake. She said, sorry, that's all we can, you know, look at right now. So then on February 20th, a couple weeks after this event happened, the police reported that they were finally interviewing teachers and students to determine what happened on February 7th and what charges they needed to, to recommend to the district attorney to be filed. February 20th, they're finally doing interviews to ask teachers and students, hey, what happened you know, two weeks ago, you're finally getting around to asking some questions now? What? Like, the school is saying, and the police are saying, that, oh, we're going to start our interviews now. Two weeks after. Yeah, because uh, important details certainly won't be overlooked when you forget them two weeks later, or certainly wouldn't give these three girls plenty of time to corroborate their stories together and talk to each other and say, hey, maybe we don't want to, want to be charged with murder here, so maybe we should get one story straight through all of us by the time the detectives finally interview us two weeks later. 
That is insane, by the way. The detectives should have immediately gone to these classrooms and said all three of these girls are in interview rooms for the next 24 hours. Like, that is what should have happened right then and there. Call their parents in, make sure that they have legal counsel, but immediately ask all three of them, what is your story on this? Not two weeks later. Very next day, February 21st, 2024, uh, the police issued a statement saying the autopsy came back saying that Nex had, quote, not died from the injuries from the attack in the restroom. The autopsy claimed that Nex instead died of, quote, natural causes. A 16-year-old non-binary person just dies at 16 years old from natural causes. Yeah, sure, that happens all the time, right? natural fucking causes. Get the fuck out of here. Like, seriously. It's as if they're like, oh, the coroner kind of said to them, hey, an autopsy is coming to your desk tomorrow. Maybe you want to start doing some detective work and asking some questions today so it doesn't look like you did nothing for two and a half weeks. That sort of feels like how it went right there. But uh, all of a sudden they're like, yeah, natural causes. Uh, there's also some speculation that the police and the coroner called this natural causes because Nex was taking hormones, but that is not true at all. Nex was report was reportedly not taking any hormones for being transgender, and this would have not contributed to their death even if they were taking these hormones, seeing that trans horm hormones are almost entirely harmless according to met many, many medical professionals. Now, the founder of Lipsa TikTok hate group said in a statement on Twitter that she is not responsible at all for the murder of Nex. However, many are pointing to the countless posts she has on her own Twitter feed harassing the very same high school and pointing to the fact that the three girls attacked Nex and another trans student together, meaning this is now a full-on hate crime. So, yeah, uh... The founder of Lips of TikTok is 100% responsible for this as well. Should be at least charged with something on this, and I would be shocked to see if they're not included in the lawsuit. Um, so that's another level of this. But yeah, yeah, sure, she's perfectly innocent besides all the uh, things that she implemented to cause this, you know? Uh, I guess, uh, you know, plenty of people over the years, like Charles Manson, he, I mean, the government totally accepted that he was innocent from all charges, even though he led a group of people to commit many different crimes over the years. And the federal government was like, yeah, no, no, Charles Manson, you're perfectly innocent. You did nothing, right? That's totally what happened in history books, right? We totally don't know about the federal government going after Charles Manson and saying, you're actually the head of this entire snake and we need to cut you off, right? It's alarming. I actually saw that comment on yesterday's video, and I'm like, that's a perfect analogy of what happened here of Libs of TikTok, because, I mean, she is basically Charles Manson at this point, causing many acts of violence across the country and somehow thinking that she's innocent. So now let's look at the future of this case and what it will look like. It is unclear at this time if anyone will be charged with murder, seeing that the police already said that, quote, all charges would be on the table and that they were just waiting on the autopsy, which later said that Nex died of, quote, natural causes at just 16 years old. So this could give the DA and the cops some sort of cop out to say, hey, they died of natural causes, so it's obviously not murder, right? Um, so this could be a conspiracy with the coroner to determine that. However, the family of this of the deceased could decide to do their own private autopsy and, you know, find their true cause, in which case it would be an even bigger uh, lawsuit against the uh, coroner as well then. The DA could also charge these three girls with murder and assault on a minor. Uh, while Oklahoma does not have a state hate crime penal code protecting LGBTQ people, uh, the federal government could step in here and charge the three girls with a federal hate crime if the state does not charge the three girls with anything. However, this may take an action from President Joe Biden in order to direct the U.S. Attorney General to look into the case in the first place. So that very well, very well might be the only uh, real justice that is served uh, as far as a hate crime goes 
it would basically take an act of President Joe Biden to direct uh, the Attorney General to look into it. So that's something that could happen. It's happened with uh, President Barack Obama. He's directed the the, uh, Department of Justice to things like this before. So it's something that Joe Biden could do very easily, and we will see if that actually happens. There is no doubt that there will be a civil lawsuit against the school for not only enacting policies which caused this to happen in the first place, allowing these girls to bully necks and other LGBTQ students for all of the school year so far with no repercussions, and not calling an ambulance immediately after they knew what happened. That's very much still something on the table and something the grandmother can do. The fact that the school reportedly only suspended Nex for being the victim of the attack instead of the perpetrators means the lawsuit is likely going to be in the millions of dollars. The civil lawsuit could go after Ryan Walters for appointing the head of a hate group to their state advisory board, which promoted this sort of violence to occur. Um, the case could also go after the libs of TikTok for spreading such hatred, which led to this violent crime, especially since they went after this high school before. No matter what happens legally from here on out, it will not bring Nex back to life. No matter how much money is awarded years from now by a jury, Nex will never benefit from that money or anything from this case. The only thing Nex can hope for is justice in the form of multiple people going to jail and losing their jobs. The three girls who attacked them should be charged with a hate crime on a federal level and murder on a state level. The school staff, especially the nurse and the principal, should be fired from their jobs or charged for child endangerment for not reporting anything to the police and not calling an ambulance even though it was protocol to do so. The only reason they didn't follow protocol on this case was because they didn't care about Nexus's life either, just like the three bullies who beat her to death in the restroom. The hospital staff should lose their medical licenses for not following state protocol and keeping Nex overnight for observation after a loss of consciousness. That's already agreed to by many medical professionals in the state of Oklahoma. The coroner of that area should certainly lose their job after claiming a 16-year-old died of natural causes one day after a violent attack where they lost consciousness and were bleeding from being thrown against the sink in a bathroom. You don't die from natural causes when you're murdered in a bathroom, okay? How this person has a job as a coroner, I have no idea. Um, not to mention the fact that how many other cases are being misreported right now? How many other people are getting autopsies that aren't getting justice because this coroner is apparently incapable of you know doing their job? Or is it just because Nex is trans and non-binary that you're like, oh, no, natural causes, mm, totally not. Anything related to these three girls beating them to death. Now, I'd be very interested to know if these three girls are, no one's reported on who these three girls are. So it's either because they're minors, which is very likely. I mean, it's illegal for a school to go out and publish who these three girls' names are. But typically media by now have been able to find who these people are just by talking with classmates and stuff of that of like, hey, who else is suspended from school this week, you know? But the fact that they're not hearing that means likely the three girls are not suspended from school and very likely other people are afraid of talking about the whole situation uh, because they can be beaten to death too one day. Or, you know, like it, it's a situation where maybe the three girls are related to somebody Maybe they're related to the coroner. Maybe they're related to the police chief, a policeman, whatever, right? Like, it makes you question why you're not reporting that information. And why did the coroner suddenly say natural causes when it's obviously not natural causes, you know? We have to wonder who's related to who here. The founder of the hate group, Liz at TikTok, should be fired from her advisory position on this Oklahoma State Board. Uh, for spreading such hatred, which directly led to the violent murder of Nex Benedict. Uh, she later said on her Twitter that, oh, I'm not responsible at all. Yeah, you are. Um, there's, I mean, you're founding a hate group and then you're spreading hate directly to this school and then you're wondering, oh, how did this person die? I have no idea from a violent attack caused against a person that I was targeting too? 
I mean, she should definitely lose her job on that advisory board. The superintendent, Ryan Walter, should be impeached from the legislator immediately for having uh, her for, from having this terrorist on this board at all and for his involvement in pushing this sort of violence in the schools that he is meant to oversee. He's supposed to be protecting the children and instead, you know, they're obviously not protected. They're obviously not safe. If all of those things do not happen in this case, where all those people lose their jobs and they lose their medical licenses and they uh, are, are fined heavily or put in jail for what they did, Nex will not get the justice they truly deserve in this case. Nex was a straight A student who enjoyed drawing, reading, playing video games like Ark and Minecraft. Nex was devoted to their cat Zeus and will forever be remembered in our rainbow hearts. They were a truly wonderful student. They were a truly wonderful person. And they were murdered in the bathroom of their high school, a high school that the superintendent said we're trying to make safe by forcing them to use the wrong restroom. That is what happened here. Violence from every level caused this event to happen. And right now it's just a matter of how many heads are gonna roll. And if no heads roll, no one loses their job, no one's put in prison over this. It truly shows you just how transphobic Oklahoma has gotten. And it truly shows you that these absolute hate groups can get away with literally murder with no repercussions. The FBI seriously needs to step up here and start charging individuals like the founder of Libs at TikTok for hate crimes. They need to put these people in jail. Otherwise, violence is going to continue. I'm afraid that one day LGBTQ people are going to say, you know what, maybe we need another Stonewall. Maybe we need another Stonewall riot for these people to finally get their act together and realize they can't keep just attacking us. On a legal uh, basis, in legislators across the country, in schools, they can't keep attacking us in restrooms, they can't keep murdering us and chopping our bodies up in Philadelphia like another trans person was a couple years ago. Violent crimes against LGBTQ people have only risen in the previous couple years. And I'm afraid that one day the LGBTQ community is going to say, you know what, enough with this violence. We need to meet this violence with more violence. That's happened at Stonewall, where the police kept raiding Stonewall and kept arresting people for being gay and trans. And eventually our community said, you know what, enough is enough. It's time to step up and fight back. It's time to defend ourselves. We're at the point where maybe the community is gonna say, enough is enough, we need to fight back. Only this time, it's not gonna be with bricks of a Stonewall Inn. This time there's guns across the country. There's so many guns that this is gonna be a very, very brutal and bloody battle. And I don't think conservatives know just how many gay and trans people carry weapons. I don't think they know just how much we will fight back. I'm not saying we should incur any violence. I'm not saying we should go out and do anything. What I'm saying is I'm afraid we're at that breaking point where the community says enough is enough. And unfortunately, there are so many conservatives out there pushing us to our breaking point that eventually something's gonna snap. And with our country having as many guns and weapons as we have, it is probably not going to be as nice and tame as Stonewall riots. That's what I'm saying. Our country is heading towards a civil war right now because the conservatives like Libs of TikTok hate groups and the far-right neo-Nazis are pushing us continually towards violence. They're murdering us in the street. They're murdering us in our bathrooms. But you know what? This could all be solved right now. Joe Biden, as president, could pack the Supreme Court, make it where the Equality Act is law. So Oklahoma cannot have any state rules to say, you're supposed to use the wrong restroom. 
the Federal Equality Act could say right now, in writing, on a federal level, that trans students are allowed to use the appropriate restroom. And this would never happen again, like it did with Nex. Because Nex would not be in that bathroom. The other trans student would not be in the bathroom either that they were in. They would be in the appropriate bathroom. You know, President Joe Biden could solve all this tomorrow if he wanted. But where's the action? The FBI could step up and say, you know what? Hey, you know this woman on Libs of TikTok that's continually sending bomb threats to high schools, to elementary schools, to hospitals across the country? Hey, maybe it's time we charge them with a hate crime. Maybe put her in some j jail bars for a couple of years and see what the hell she thinks then. She's a terrorist. Through and through. She causes terror. She sends violent attacks on people. She's the next Charles Manson, and we're not recognizing for what it is. By the way, kudos to the fan that pointed that out. Uh, thank you for that analogy. Honestly, we need to start legally going after these people. Otherwise, it is going to be JFK's uh, quote all over again. When you make peaceful uh, revolution impossible, uh, you make violent revolution uh, inevitable. And, and he said something like that. And so that's right where we're at right now of the country is very upset about next and we need to act legally against these people put them behind the bars show them that they cannot do this otherwise it will continue and they'll continually push us towards violence and unfortunately for conservatives when they push us towards violence this time it's not going to be bricks at stonewall so anyway that's all for our episode today thank you so much for watching please subscribe to our channel because we have plenty of other videos on our channel here showing you how normal and perfectly valid it is to be trans, to be non-binary, to be gay, how perfectly healthy it is to be LGBTQ. Um, and I hope on our channel that we show you how loved and accepted you are. Um, we try our best behind the scenes to moderate comments and to make sure you know how much you are loved out in the world. And I only hope that next found some individuals out there online like our community here at PBR uh, to let them know how loved they are and accepted they are by people not so much in their area but outside in the world um, so I'm so sorry to Nexus's family for everything you're going through and I hope Nex rests rest in peace um, because honestly after this sort of harassment their entire lives that's what they deserve. They deserve to rest in peace now and not have all of this still happening even after they're gone. And so uh, our hearts break for this story. My husband and I have been reading articles all week about this happening and we've been breaking down and crying because of how terrible everything is. Every story we're finding leads to another detail that's even more terrible than the last and that's why we had to come back today and report on more because there were a lot of details left out of yesterday's episode and we're just like oh it's much much worse than you think you know um but please know that power to barring bows and many other people are out here trying to do work to help this community and to help you know how loved and accepted you are if you're watching this and you're a member of the community that's maybe thinking, oh, this is how much hate is in the world. Please know there's way more love in the world. It's just these sort of stories stand out and we have to report on them when they happen because otherwise these people will die in vain. And so we have to report on the hate, but there's so much more love. And I hope you know that you are loved and you are accepted if you are LGBTQ, uh, but if you're running a hate group that's meant to you know, c commit violence across the country and meant to get teachers and librarians fired, then you can go fuck yourself because you're a terrorist. And I don't know how in the world you are still not in jail. That's all I'm going to say. So much love and rainbows, Professor Pride. Have a good day, everyone. And as always, bye for now.